Welcome to the history of Haunted Nottinghamshire. Let's meet the team. So here we are, right in the centre of Nottingham. This is the Galleries of Justice. First held court in 1375. This place is famous for being a jail, a court, and a place of public execution. Let's go and check it out. So I assume that these are the cells then where they held the prisoners with a nice squeaky gate. When did this place open as a, as a jail? It was a jail in 1449. And what kind of people Glyn were held here? Anybody, you know, debtors, thieves, felons, murderers, rapists. So if you pinched a loaf of bread, you yeah, were basically you locked in here, basically. Yeah, even if you pinched a loaf of bread, there's records stating that you needed hard labour. Right, which involves what? Well, you hard, tw so many hours a day working, grafting, um, so a lot of people were even deported to Australia. Wow. Um, Lucky so people, eh? <laughs> not in maybe that they, not in maybe that they didn't see it that, no. that point of view. And Rob, as a parapsychologist, have you spent much time in these cells investigating? I have. I've spent many nights of investigation here at the Galleries of Justice. And is it a place that you would say is haunted? I would say it's haunted. Um, specifically, I found, good, I found some good evidence to say this place actually does have some sort of phenomena that exists. I caught some quite stunning, what I'd call stunning EVP right. on audio and video. And not only did we record it on audio and video, we also witnessed it and heard it ourselves. Oh nice, okay. So you've got all that corroborating evidence to back Great. each other up. There's any spirit people in here now with us. Not twice the yes, once the no. Bang on something, knock on something, tough one of us. Did you do that? Bang on something, knock on something, tough one of us. And as a medium, Glenn, have you picked up on any inmates here in the past? <laughs> quite a few. There's a jailer that we, I seem to connect with quite a lot now. Right. But that has actually been reported on many yeah. occasions of keys rattling. Right, okay. And footsteps. And have you heard these? Yes. Right. Yeah, and just recently I did hear, a, actually it was last week because we did a little investigation, we did hear something in the condemned cell behind us. Right. Which we'd never heard before. Um, after deducing what it actually was, it was like a, the rack that was going around. What is the condemned cell? Condemned cell is where people were put for the night before they were executed. Right. Further down in the um, galleries. Well, I think we should catch up with Glenn, who's upstairs doing some psyche cart and doing a bit of a recce at this place. So we'll meet him a bit later. But what we're going to do is check out the condemned cell next, I think. Sounds interesting. I can sense the atmosphere in this place, but what was this all about? <laughs> what kind of person would have stayed here, Kelly? The kind of person where it would have been the last night, the came here, um, door slammed, and then nothing until they had the keys go, and then they'd go oh, to right. the So this was actually the last night. Right. Like so, so you'd have to be seriously drunk to have come in this place. Yeah. So what we're saying that this is the last night on earth, basically. Yeah. Now, we're in here now, it's nice and bright, it's the daytime, but I imagine there were no windows or anything There's in no this. Windows, no. And at the back of us is one of the old beds, and I imagine there were no mattresses or anything on there, it just would have been this. I mean, just imagine what kind of thing would go through your mind. Now, I can see Rob in the background, he's having a bit of a paddy. What's happening, Rob? Talk to me. Well, Talk to me. At this point, I'm sorry. He's sweating over there. 
I'm catching quite a few readings. Let's have a little look then. If I point the EMM beads around the camera, as you can see, the needle's gone quite, quite long. What I'm picking up could be natural. Right. It seems very strange. I'm just picking up in this room okay. at this point in time. So whether it's anything par paranormal, I'm not sure, but it's quite interesting either way. Oh, nice. Okay. in the overnight cell and uh, Glenn has come to join us that's very kind of you, well, thank um, you. it's fine now you've been up some mischief upstairs is that right I have yeah that's right yeah. we shall have a little chat about a bit later okay. but More than before we do anything in this cell I just want to show you folks at home just how dark this this cell actually would have been if we turn this right off I mean can you imagine spending how much, how much time in here up to 23 hours a day and what was this cell used for Kelly they were used for minor crimes, like such as pinching a loaf of bread. So you'd spend a night in here, would you, basically? Yeah. Like yeah, there'd have been up to about eight people in here. Eight people? Yeah. And, this, and there's four of us here. In fact, there's five of us now who joined us. Yeah. And this place is, is very, very tiny. So, I mean, would there have been a window in here? No. So this bit behind us would have been bricked over at one point. Yeah. This is just a barrel vaulted ceiling, obviously, because it's a... Seller, I guess, want of a better phrase. So, have we experienced any paranormal stuff in this room, Rob? I have. Uh, many years ago, as I was saying before early in the documentary, that um, on the first time I was actually here, um, in this particular cell, I was recording audio. Now, I didn't hear anything at the time of recording. It was only when I got back home and looked at the footage and listened to the footage that I actually was sworn at by something in here. So, you know, to actually be insulted by a ghost <laughs> was quite shocking. Um, but it was quite interesting because at the time I was recording it on audio, mm. at the time I was videoing it, but nothing appeared on video, right. nothing on the audio. But um, it was quite interesting. And Glenn, as a, as a medium, have you picked up on anything in this, this cell? Quite a lot of stuff. What sort of thing have you had over the years? Again, with, as we've been doing vigils, um, as the doors being shut, we've seen figures, shadow figures, right. underneath the door, as okay. the jailers walking around. Um, we picked up, we'd heard a little voice, we heard scratches in here as well, I can't recreate it. Strong yeah. dirty smells as well, isn't there? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. it's erotic smells, if you like. Erotic? <laughs> Is that what you said? Erotic. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said erotic. <laughs> <laughs> It's a strange thing to say, but it's alive with the dead. Right. It's, um, it is very, very active. Okay. And, and if you were... Some areas are more active than others. Okay. Certain, certain spirits I've connected with over the years. Yeah. More than others. And as a medium, how would you tune into that? Have you got your own way of doing no, this? No, or no, is, no, it, doing things, is yeah. it just always there? Yeah, it was. I think from with me, it started out something when I was about 20. Right, okay. I didn't know what was actually going off. Yeah, I, I can see. imagine it's pretty, pretty disturbing stuff really, to be honest. Yeah. And to be fair, if I was to start today, I still couldn't tell people how it happens. It's just there, just basically, happened, okay. And well, look, obviously works different. Yeah, I'm going to say, how do you work? Yeah. I mean, how does, it, how does it work for you? Um, similar way to Glyn. I mean, I started when I was 18. Obviously, um, I experienced quite a lot of weird things I couldn't explain. Um, luckily enough, I was coaxed towards a spiritual movement and that helped me to understand it a lot better. Okay. But in terms of being in this location, um, I've actually witnessed and sensed and seen quite a lot of activity. Mm. Um, also, the last time I was here, we were just taking snapshots as well as doing the medium ship. And um, upon going home, we'd zoom in to the photographs and we'd see um, spirit faces, we'd see quite a numerous amount of them down the cells down the way there um, we captured um, photos inside of the corpse as well um, of children of gentlemen um, we captured voices as well um, and from a, a feeling sense we also picked up upon um, the, um, the frustration in these buildings the uh, the anger the anguish as well um, yeah, and quite a lot of sorrow, obviously, but um, as a medium, being quite sensitive, 
um, you know, you've got to be quite mindful of all these emotions and, mm. and obviously when we leave the building today we will cleanse and heal ourselves ready for the next location. Okay. Now, Glenn is, and some of this is wrong, but you're a psychic artist as well. Yeah. And that's something that really appeals to me because I'm an artist myself, not a psychic artist, just an artist. Uh, it'll be interesting to have a little chat about that a bit later. Okay. So Glenn, you've been busy doing some uh, some psychic art for us. What, Indeed, what uh, have we got? Well, straight away, um, as soon as I went into the cell there, I felt quite a lot of aggressive energy, mm -hmm. very forthcoming, um, a need to actually be uh, recognised. And so I picked up my pad and pen and straight away, it's the fastest I've probably channeled um, a spirit drawing today. It just came on the paper straight away. I got the name of Samuel Peterson, um, he gave me his, his age of 26 years old and I got the year of 1840 and as I asked my guys they said he was a common thief um, but I just felt this such frustration in fact I was glad to get out of that cell right just not because of how it looks or anything but just it's, the energy it's quite an imposing room isn't it yeah and the fact that he was a common thief I mean this kind of links back to what we were saying when we were chatting inside the cell because we yeah. said Kelly mentioned that this was where you sort of minor thieves might go for an overnight stay or something. So, common thief, loaf of bread, that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, here we are in the exercise yard at the Galleries of Justice. Also, at the back of it is a mock hanging. Now, prisoners were kept here for 22, 23 hours locked up, and then for one hour a day, they were marched around in single file. An intriguing part of this exercise yard is these stones here, because it signifies some people are actually buried underneath here with like unmarked graves. I mean, just one particularly interesting character I would like to mention is this gentleman here, it's William Savile, who was executed in 1844 for actually murdering his wife and his three children in Colic Woods. He actually slit their throat and he was hung outside the galleries. The last public execution was in 1864 when Richard Parker was executed on the 10th of August for murder. Um, Spirit gave me um, the name of a woman called Mary Ann Ch Charlesworth. She's 40 years old and she passed in 1864. She was a woman of ill repute and a madam. And the energies I felt with her is though she was very um, much like a bully in her life. She bullied other uh, women to do ply their ills. I feel as though um, she suffered quite a deal of uh, violent encounters with other inmates. And I also feel as though she uh, repented for her sins. And she was doing it basically to keep her family going and also to keep herself going because I feel as though she was in a lot of debt herself and thus this uh, gave her the, uh, the impetus to carry forward her trade. So I've got to say that this is the women's cell uh, in the jail and that bedroom would have slept up to 10 women who would have committed crimes. I mean, these could be small crimes, large crimes. 
that is the freakiest of all the rooms for me. You get that real sense that you don't want to be there, like there's some strange presence in there. And I know that Glyn has got an interesting photograph that he took there recently. So Glyn, then, what's this photograph you've got? Well, it's curious, we've done the last, one of the last investigations I did. Mm. I took a photograph on my phone. Yeah. And it appeared, on the bed, it appears to be uh, like the apparition of a little child, a little baby. Okay. Actually sat on the actual bed itself. I tried to recreate this photo a few times and it's not actually been... Recreated. And there's nothing there, is there? No, no, in actual physical, yeah, exactly, which is why I went in there originally. There's no yeah. Yeah. no mannequins or anything like yeah. that. And I've got to say for the folks watching this, I mean, that is a really intense room there. That's probably the most intense room I would ever say. Now, Kelly, this room that we're in now, what would this have been used for? Well, if he was lucky enough to get employment in prison, this is where he'd be. With the laundry, ironing, embroidery, sewing, all in here. So this would have... Basically a place of work. Yeah, which you can just see about yeah. looking around at the mangle and things, yeah. So imagine this was the uh, this was the way to keep sane. Now, you mentioned something about the babies that were born in there. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That, there is. It's just unconfirmed reports or anything like that. It's just rumours at the moment. But I've been told by two or three people that if people were pregnant in here and the babies were born, they were actually killed um, because somebody had been thrown on the fire. There was no space. There was no space. There yeah. was no space. There yeah. were, they weren't married. Right. Um, really awful. And as a parent, and I'm sure you'll agree, I mean, that sort of thing just gives you the shivers, don't it? And maybe that's why that room is such an aggressive um, place to be. Now, where I've just walked up from is what's commonly known as the pit. Now, where the, what the pit is, it was basically contains an oubliette. And what an oubliette is, is where prisoners, prisoners were thrown down a pit, left to die and rot. There were no way out, no food, no water. Now, um, down here, it has been reported. There's been quite a bit of poltergeist activity, stones being thrown around, people being touched, putrid smells like rotting flesh, and um, just not very nice. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a place to try and avoid. A, a common theory, and a theory I believe that counts for most ghostly sightings, yeah, and that's called the stone tape theory. Stone tape theory. Now that's a theory I believe accounts for most paranormal sightings and phenomena. What the stone tape theory implies is that visual um, sounds are somehow recorded into the environment by some unnatural process. It's known that rock, granite, quartz contain silica. Now what silica is, you find it in the old videotapes, you find it used in microchips, and basically what that's used for is to obviously store information. Now, it is believed, and what I personally believe is that psychics somehow read into this ethereal data information and somehow pick up on visual apparitions and sounds. Because if you look through the literature and research, you find out most ghosts, are not, in, not interactive and don't follow a set pattern. So here we are outside the Ye Olde Salutation Inn, again right in the centre of Nottingham. This inn dates back to the year 1240. Right, so we now have come from the galleries and we're now at the Yield Salutation Inn in Nottingham, which reputedly, uh, Jay, is, is one of the most 
haunted pubs in this area, would you say? One of the haunted, supposedly one of the most haunted pubs in England. Wow. Not the UK. Apparently there's one in Scotland that's got about 40 more than we've got. So, how old is this pub? Uh, 778 years old. Wow. Is this the oldest pub in Nottingham? Well, there is an argument that there's three of them. Okay. But with carbon dating being done on our beams, we are the oldest building. Okay. So, we're going to claim that title, yes. Nice one. That works for us. And this is a tricky question. Can you give us a brief history of the Yield Salutation Inn? Uh, roughly, yes. Um, there was an inn here before, the one that's built now. Um, it was built on the land because the tanners had it. They used the caves below for obviously tanning leathers. Um, that was a wooden structure, it was knocked down. This one was built apparently by the Royal Butcher. Right. He wanted it for storing the meat for the castle. Um, there was a tunnel that went all the way through to the castle. Sadly, it's no longer there. That's a shame. Uh, when they built Maid Marion Way, they bored a sinkhole uh, and filled it with concrete. As the road went past, yeah, yes, yeah. Because yeah, obviously yeah. it wasn't safe to have a, a tunnel right. under the road. Um, but he built the inn here and it's been here for the last 778 years. Excellent. It's nice got one. quite a history with uh, the English Civil War. Okay. Um, King Charles apparently uh, used to use it for meetings because it was classed as neutral ground. Right. Um, it was an interesting um, story from the early days of um, the English Civil War, before things really started getting towards being rather dangerous. Yeah. Um, and that was that Cromwell and Charles used to both recruit here. Right. And the recruiters, Charles's recruiters were allowed on a Monday and a Wednesday. Yeah. The Cromwell um, recruiters were allowed on a Tuesday and a Thursday and the weekends belong to them. So, obviously this place has got a massive amount of history, but one quirky story I, I enjoyed was the one about the old sign up there. Yeah. What can you tell us about this? Um, the sign was, it was hung on the, what was then the front entrance, yeah. which was on Houndsgate. Um, we know it goes back as far as 1500 because there's pictures from that time. Mm. It could be even earlier, but it actually depicts a left-handed handshake. Yeah, which it, you wouldn't notice unless somebody mentions it to no. you. It's one of those things that it's, you don't really take note of, is it? It's to do with the way the thumb comes over the yeah, other hand. Yeah, when you shows, say you can see, yeah. Which way around the handshake is. But from when that was taken down, mm. the handshake ended up, the paintings that were then done, mm. they're all right-handed handshakes. Yeah. Obviously the artist drew a handshake as we now do them. Yeah. Um, but we've happily had this replicated again, and once more the left-handed handshake is yeah. hanging above the, the pub again. Excellent. But they believe the left-handed handshake. There's two schools of thought. Yeah. One is that it's the hand closest to the heart. Yes. But the, I think probably the most realistic was that soldiers, knights, etc., they were always trained mm. out of being left-handed. Yeah. Because it was seen as being, you know, something to do with the devil if you yeah. were left-handed. So people were trained right. to be right-handed. So a soldier always carried a shield on his left arm. So obviously, if he was potentially making a truce with an enemy, mm. he could lay down his shield yeah. and reach out his hand. If he was betrayed, yeah. he still had his sword to defend himself. Right, nice. So that's kind of... I think that's a belting little story. And obviously, lots of history. Yeah, All this pub in Nottingham, like that. What about ghosts? Oh, it's very you must. How long have you been the landlord of this place? Um, well, I've been here... Um, I started off as a manager um, three years ago. Just okay. About. Yeah. Um, I took over the pub just over a year ago. Okay. Became the landlord. Right. Um, but you can't be here for more than a day or so before you start noticing sort of, even if it's just a, like a cold breeze on or your like neck, a and sort of you know from the a corner. glimpse of something. I mean, we've got people. I mean, my doorman. He was going to use the gents' toilet, mm. and a guy walked in in front of me. My gents' toilet is tiny. Yeah. It's really small. And the toilet at the end yeah. is where my doorman goes, because obviously it's a bit safer, yeah. just in case it's upset anybody. <laughs> As he walked into the toilet, it's literally a tiny corridor to the, to to the main toilet with the yeah. urinals at the side. There was nobody in there, right. yet he followed the guy in. Yeah. So I thought, must be imagining things. Yeah. Closed the door. When he came back out, the guy was leaving the toilet. Right. You know, um, yeah. there's... There's little things like that, isn't it, really? And we were chatting at the galleries about this, and there's something called the stone tapes theory, that these old old buildings, you know, they sort of absorb the energy from yeah. people that have been here, spent time here, maybe died here, and it replays, you know, on a... Because it's like 
energy is all around you. And for me, I think that explains quite a lot. You know, what's it like down in the uh, cellar? The caves are, you pick up some things. To be honest, the caves aren't the key. Yeah. Most of the activity we get are the sellers because um, yeah. a former landlord um, fell down the stairs, broke his neck. Right. We get a lot of activity down there because he likes to keep the sellers very clean. Right. You know, so he's it's quite prestigious. And, okay. Uh, he likes to turn taps on and turn the sump on and off. Ah, and right. He okay. opens doors and closes doors and yeah. You know, but there's more activity up here. If you think about, you know, other than Rosie, Rosie died in the caves. Yeah. We know for a fact little Rosie died in the caves. Mm -hmm. She was taken down there because it was cool and dark. Yeah. And it was quieter than the pub. But most people lived and died up here. This is where the energy you know, is. This is where the energy yeah, is. This is yeah, where people yeah. sort of have that heightened emotion of things Absolutely, happen. yeah, absolutely. You know, so there's more activity up here yeah. and in the upstairs rooms mm. than there is really in the caves. Because that's only visited Even by I mean, a few people. Caves date back to about 400 and there's probably been, you know, a few people have passed away down there. Yeah. But it, a lot of the time it depends on how people pass away. That tends to be what leaves does. the imprint yeah, more than anything yeah. else. So, yeah. you know, it's a case of we get more up here. Yeah, well, exactly like you say, because this is where all the atmosphere and the energy is. And if we talking about the stone tapes, residual energy, which is replaying an event, this is where it's going to happen. Yeah. Well, listen, thanks for that. That's Welcome. been very informative. We appreciate your time. As you can see, this stone is very different from the rest. It was bought from Nottingham Castle for King Charles II to sit on, as I didn't want to sit on the rest of the stones where the commoners sat. Now you two, the guys picking anything up? Um, yeah, I was probably walking down in, in this building, um, especially the cave area. Um, I feel as though back in the day this would have been really busy, hustle and bustle. Um, I was told earlier that there was a lot of trading going on down here and also the words honour amongst thieves. So I feel that there is that sort of vibration around this uh, area. Also, um, there's a lot of inquisitive spirits, I want to say that, and I feel as though they're watching us now from the steps. Um, I've been getting chills and also I've been getting a uh, real intense head pressure, almost like a headache coming on ever since we came down into the caves. Um, but um, there we go. I'm getting the name of George, um, Samuelson, um, the name of Sarah, Sarah, I've got Sarah as well. Um, give me an age, please. 32. Um, and are these associated with the inn itself or completely different? With the Sarah, I've got the, the year 1740. With her. <coughs> Excuse me, she's putting something on to my throat. Forgive me. I feel as if she was she was strangled. I feel like I'm being strangled right now. So down here. You gotta say so? yes. I've gotta say yes. Anything else you can bring? I'm seeing an altercation between her and a male. Uh, the male. As I'm being shown him, he's got a thick moustache. Thick sideburns, short brown hair to around there. And I feel he was intoxicated with liquor at the time. She was forced down here into this area and I feel he wanted to conduct something of an obscene nature with her. Um, I'm seeing her being grabbed by the throat. 
I'm also sensing that she tried to retaliate with any implement she could find down here. Um, I'm seeing like a sharp bit of glass or something. Um, but he didn't save her, I've just been told that. I'm picking something up about three some more upstairs. Okay. Um, I know um, Jay spoke earlier about the uh, landlord mm. who died. Um, I've got, I, I just got a little sense that the reason he fell was a medical reason and he didn't slip. Okay. Um, as if like a, an aneurysm, mm. as if it was just like it. That was it. It was his time done there and then. Okay. I think most people would seem to assume that he actually fell, but he was it more or less an instant passing. Okay. If anyone died here, down in these cellars with us, and is still here in spirit and is grounded, could you give us a sign of your presence, please, while making a noise? If you are here or grounded, maybe he's in visitation, give us a sign of your presence, please. Can you make a sound? Maybe those sounds are coming from upstairs. Yeah, possibly. that's what I'm saying. That's definitely on the bar area. Well, possible. I might have to check it. Yeah, didn't it? There, there, there were definitely noises there. <clears throat> okay. Did, and it, it didn't seem like furniture moving. I'd say no. Knocks. Yeah, there were definitely yeah. knocks. That was a knock, man. Yeah, there was like one, and then there one two over there. So I'm hoping we might have caught that actually on yeah. camera. But either way, I, I think that was quite interesting. I uh... I heard the sounds coming from over there. What, across from here? The banjo. Okay, well, we're all dead. I don't think it was all coming from upstairs. Okay, well, what we've got here on here is a, a geophone. And what that is, is a vibration detector. So, what I'll do, I'll actually put it over in that corner just to see if it will register any vibrations from any possible knocks when we ask it. So, if I place this over here. <laughs> If there's any spirit people here that wish to communicate with us, give, give us a sign or two knocks for yes, once for no for conversation. Is there any spirit presences that wish to communicate with us now? And if there's any spirit people here with us now, could you give us a definite loud bang please? see here you can see hot spots from people people give enough obviously heat but here what we're looking at now is obviously the camera the sensor and the lights but as I'm scanning around hoping to pick up maybe something else an image of some sort of
what I've done now, I've actually switched the camera mode to coldest. So if anything is cold, it may register on the thermal imaging camera. If there's any spirit people here that wish to communicate with us, could you show us your presence, please? One of the, one of the team members actually goes into the bar area and actually stamps three times just to see if the sound actually carries down into these servers. It's two and a half minutes, so I'm going to stamp three times. Five people, they're tops. Yeah. And most of them were sat down at the barn, not yeah. moving or anything. No. So there's not much activity, it's dead up there, literally. Mm. And it is noisy with music, really noisy. It ain't music for anything, you hear the bass, the, mm. the, the bass, you can't hear that, can you? No. This is the trip to Jerusalem, which is the oldest pub in England, uh, opened in 1189 AD. Let's go and check it out. So here we are again in the centre of Nottingham, and this is the famous Cursed Galleon of the ye old trip to Jerusalem. This place is an inn that is built directly underneath Nottingham Castle. Opened in 1189, this place has got so much character. The Cursed Galleon, why is it cursed? Well, you can see it's covered in a thick layer of dust. And the story goes that three people attempted to clean this, and all three people mysteriously died. So, as you can see, it's protected by glass, and nobody dare clean it. When you're doing a ghost and history in Nottingham, you've got to come here, haven't you, really? It's reputedly the oldest pub in the, the, the world, it's say. Yeah, the world, the world yeah. dating back to 1189. But I mean, this is how many pubs is there in they, not England? Yeah, that will say it's the oldest one. Three, yeah. three, yeah, three. Yeah. three four. I mean, this one's got a lot of character. There's no question of that. I mean, it's, it's the caves, and just here actually is the uh, is the old kind of shaft where they used to take the. Um, beer from here, we used to brew the beer into the castle and you can still count your trapdoors up there. But is there any interesting facts that we should know about this place? You were telling me about the word trip, you saying Yeah, it, it means um, like a stop off break when you're to, to Jerusalem. Yeah, as opposed to a physical a, trip. A trip to Jerusalem, yeah. 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 So all coaches swing by Nottingham on the way to Jerusalem, <laughs> basically. <laughs> And of course, is the famous galleon that we spoke about earlier as well. But has anybody had any paranormal experiences here? Yeah, I mean, myself, um, back in 2006, I've done an investigation here. It's down in the cellar, and what's reputed to happen there is obviously poltergeist activity, and a man is supposed to be seen in there. And in responses for it to do something, we had several knocks on cakes, intelligent. Hmm. Um, knocks on the kegs. Um, we also had stones that were being thrown and some shuffling, a lot of footfall. And when we happened to turn around at one point, what looked like a bottle of windoline or some sort of cleaner, it was sat on the ledge, it was walking to and fro. Right. Um, so we just caught it from the act of actually being moved. 
as if it was finishing what it was doing. But I do know there is supposed to be a man reported down there and has been seen, mm-hmm. um, as well as general podcast activity. Actually, Matt, um, I've actually got this here. Um, it's a lovely picture, um, I mm. believe her to be, I was given the name of Kelly Malone, 23 mm. years, yeah. Um, the, the energy I get with her is I feel as though she was some sort of um, aid to the to the castle. Right, okay. And, uh, yeah, the vibe I get with her is it's one of a, a sexual nature in terms of um, helping the castle out in that regard. All right, okay. Um, like a lady of the night, a ill repute. Um, she kind of worked within the castle. Yeah, I feel that... Tell me again. She was taken in through the tunnels, I believe, and okay. taken up into the castle. Right. Um, she was a secret, a secret to those uh, in the castle, so I feel, right. so yeah. that's why she would use these... Um, so I imagine that she would have been sort of, you know... Do you, do, you think, do you think she was attached to the castle? Do you think she's attached to the actual inn itself? Um, no, I don't feel that she's attached to the inn, but I feel that she would have come in this way. Right, okay. Through yeah. to the castle. Which you more to do with the castle. Yeah, 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 definitely. It's very pretty. Cheers. 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 Only clear. Cut. <laughs> the only words he come out with in that segment was the back doorway. <laughs> it's just clean all over now, isn't it? <laughs> Nottinghamshire, built in the 13th century and owned by the Annas the family. Now this was passed over to the Charworth family in the 15th century and that family owned Annas the Hall and the surrounding lands for 350 years. It's in a bit of a rough condition because in 2015 this place was destroyed by fire. Mary Charworth, who lived in Annesley Hall, was the childhood lover of Lord Byron, who lived close by Newstead Abbey. Now, Byron was a famous poet, of course, and he wrote a poem called The Dream, which apparently was written about their affair. So, this is the grounds of All Saint Church in the grounds of Annesley Hall, which has been a church since the year 1200 and finally closed its doors in 1878. Now you can see it's in disrepair, but believe it or not, this place is actually a grade one listed building and an ancient monument. Now, um, I was out here by myself and it was a cloudless night, no mist, no fog about. And um, just over this area down here, I was taking some pictures. Um, I didn't see anything or felt anything at the time. And um, when I got home, when I had the pictures developed, is what appeared this strange amorphous shape on, on the picture. Um, I had them analysed by several photographic experts and they said that they were baffled by what they'd seen. The first time I investigated it, um, I wasn't sure about the stories and what have you, but I did feel, strangely enough, like a choking sensation ran throat when I was going up the stairs. Now, apparently a servant girl has hung herself from oh, the stairs, yes, yeah. uh, which I didn't know about at the time, so I found it was really interesting. Um, I've actually heard animals 
moaning and groaning and a whining sound on the top yeah. floor. Uh, also in the um, the outbuildings, we were actually just doing a, conducting a vigil. I, I felt like a, a real tug on my uh, shirt. No one else was anywhere near me. You felt you felt a physical tug. hand. Yes, but I nothing, felt uh, nothing, nothing there. there. No, it was like a physical tug on my shirt to say, "Oh, I'm here." Yeah. yeah. I, I saw a gentleman stood there in spirit form. I was still visualising today about five foot eight, five foot nine medium build but he got a he had got a cloak on now legend has it that um, there's a lot of hellfire club in the uh, cellar a former employee here that worked used to work here dick star was saying okay. that um i think it was a william either william charworth or william musters mm -hmm. down in that cell area yeah. Um, this presence is felt quite strongly. Right. It's what people report as a negative spirit. Yeah. Um, they said in his former lifetime that he actually conducted devil worship and satanic ritual. Whether that's true, I don't know, or whether yeah. it's just a myth or a legend, no one really knows. Fantastic building, and also the grounds of the church as well. Yeah. Um, you can feel a complete contrast between the church and the house behind us, I mean the church is really peaceful, relaxing when you walk around the grounds here, you feel at bliss if you like. Um, like I say, in the house, completely different energy of a negative vibration, um, a lot of sadness, a lot of um, tears and heartfelt, um, just people being downtrodden in that building and you yeah. just pick up on it. Whether it's the, the stone tape theory as you mentioned yourself Rob, or um, just the energies that we're picking up as mediums as we're walking around. But it's definitely um, a shame that, that nowadays, due to the, uh, the state of the building, nobody is allowed to go in, but um, mm. it is a fantastic visit. Wow, what a day we've had so far. And now we have to found, well, a memorial to murdered teenager, Bessie Shepherd, who was brutally murdered near this spot on the 7th of July, 1817. She went from Papplewick to Mansfield to find, find work. And happily, she did find work. But the following day, she was brutally murdered at this, this spot by Charles Rotherham a soldier in the Napoleonic Wars. Now, Charles Rotherham was only caught when he was trying to sell Bessie's new umbrella and brand new shoes at a pub further down the road. That's the only way they found him, and he was tried and hung at the Galleries of Justice, which we went to this morning. Due to the brutality of the murder, the locals were so shocked and disgusted that they set up a public subscription to pay for a memorial stone to Bessie. Now, this is not the original stone. It's been replaced a few times, but this has been moved from its original place for safety reasons. Quite a few ghost stories surrounding Bessie have been told down the years. That the first recorded one was when a car sped out of control and hit the memorial stone. And for a few days afterwards, she was seen hanging around it. The second story associated with Bessie's ghost is when the road was widened to what it is today. So they had to move the stone. Uh, Bessie was clearly not happy about this. And for days after, her spirit was yet again seen roaming. 
people have actually witnessed and picked up a girl walking along this stretch of the A60 thinking that she was a hitchhiker to stop and offer her a lift only for her to disappear and vanish into thin air. And also further down this road on the wards of the old Harlow Wood Hospital staff used to report sightings of a girl matching Bessie's description and again she would just vanish into thin air. So she is now wandering around in eternity making sure that her tragic story will never ever be forgotten. So here we are outside Plesley Mills in Nottinghamshire. This is right on the border between Derbyshire and Nottinghamshire. This is one of three mills. This one is the oldest of the three mills and is the most atmospheric and the most haunted as well. This place was owned by the Vigella Company and famous for producing cotton fabrics and garments. Now, this place opened in 1784 and as you can imagine, it's seen a whole lot of history. In 1784, the cotton mills first opened. As it's a small village, they used the workhouses from the surrounding areas. They brought in children from the ages of seven to work 13-hour shifts a day. In the 1600s, the mills was used as an iron forging. The mansion behind me is where Henry lived, and it is rumoured that he practised dark arts down in the cellar. Stories is the actual guy who stood at the side of the uh, forklift truck, which is sat situated between Mill 1 and Mill 2. Okay. He actually um, used to appear to people and uh, delivery drivers when um, in the middle of the night they were doing the deliveries. They stopped to ask him for help, get out of the truck because he wasn't answering them, and then he'd just basically vanish and disappear. He's doing a tour around on the top floor, okay. and I was the only person that actually saw this gentleman and I actually spoke to him. Fantastic. Um, it's uh, because they were looking at me saying, who's he, who's he looking, who's he talking to? Because we went through the door. Yeah. I don't know if you've been on the top floor, have you? I have, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It was a timekeeper. He must have been like, um, like a foreman, if you like. Okay. I thought he was a character as we were walking around that he was going to start telling us a story. Yeah. He was so clear. Uh, I just said hello, and they just carried on as if nothing had happened. And I'm like, yeah, is it me or? And then the second time we went round for a, a tour round, there was six independent witnesses all saw a gentleman in the top floor window of Mill One, looking down at us from the, That's uh, from the yeah, outside of yes, the from the out, yeah, he was on the inside, we were on the outside, and the six people saw the same man at the same time, same description, and I think you can't get much more better than no. that. Yeah, exactly. And I've experienced a few things here, and this is the, one of the only places that I can say I've experienced things, and it ties into what you two guys were saying. First of all, I've got a photograph that we can see here. which to me it looks as though it's a man looking out from the outside in. Now, you yeah. two mentioned this. Yes. You said that this was taken on the top floor as well. Right. You said that you've had some experiences yeah, there, experience. which, which links in perfectly.
there's a lot of children, a lot of energy of children here. Yeah. And um, I've been walking around and you can feel them actually holding your hands. Yeah. They're wanting to play hide and seek. And on one particular occasion, we sat in one of the rooms, just did a silent vigil there. And it was in the darkness. Mm -hmm. And upon coming out of the room, we went into the corridor where it was all lit up. Yeah. And all the rest of the team was laughing and pointing at my face. And I was saying, <laughs> well, what's the problem here? You know, yeah. I'm, I'm not, not the prettiest of guys, but what's the problem here? <laughs> and uh, they said, have a look in the mirror or take a picture on your phone. Yeah. And all my face and my head was blue. Was it? And I'd got little uh, finger marks where a child had been doing that on my head. Oh, that's so fascinating. fascinating. That's amazing, isn't it? Just behind my shoulder is mill number two. One particular interesting ghost story connected with this mill is that of the tragic death of one of the workers who through sheer exhaustion got trapped and mangled in a machine. He worked on while his friends took a break. He is said to haunt the staircases in the mill number two and has been seen on many occasions by several different witnesses. So behind us we can see uh, Mill 3. Now this is one of the last mills to be built in the early 1900s. Now we can see that the light is really fading. We've got the street lamps on, but Blaine, have you got any interesting ghost stories or facts about this place? What is strange about this particular mill indeed is the security guards keep getting buzzed through to say the lift is operating even when nobody is in the building whatsoever. Pretty creepy stuff. It is really. They're going obviously and check there's no burglars or anything like that. Yeah. But the lift does seem to operate itself. It's been checked for wiring and everything like that. So almost like kind of poltergeist kind of activity in, in some way. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Because interacting with things, yeah. In 1840 there was a fire on Christmas Day on Mill 1. And again, in 1844, there was a fire, again, unbelievably, on Christmas Day on eight, in this mill here. Both mills were quickly rebuilt because it was so vital for the whole community yeah, yeah. to get it done. But for lightning to strike twice, if you like, it would yeah. just be... It's incredible when you it think about it. Too, yeah. So here we are at Pleasant Pit. Now this is actually in Derbyshire, but it's right on the border in Nottinghamshire. It's a stone's throw from the mills. It's a shame not to come here for a quick visit. This place has leaped in history. It's a fantastic way to finish. The light's finishing. The sun's just about gone down. This was handed over to the mining corporation uh, by William Nightingale in 1872. Now he was the father, of course, of Florence Nightingale. And it's rumoured that she was the first person to dig the first bit of soil for the actual shaft. Now, as far as ghost stories are concerned, there is a speak and talk about a man who jumped down the shaft after the colliery closed in 1986. And screams are often heard on these peaceful evenings. Pleasley Pit is a scheduled ancient monument and is currently being developed into a heritage site.
ship room here. And straight away upon entering this room, I'm picking up quite a lot of spiritual uh, vibrations and activity. Just as I stood here in front of the fireplace, um, I'm getting a sensation around my heart. So I feel as though someone would have had um, some sort of heart defect here, maybe a heart attack or a stroke. Um, and I'm feeling a sensation down my left arm as well. Uh, this energy I'm picking up is, is a female um, and it's giving me the name Mary Anderson. Uh, I want to say 56 years old. Um, all I'm seeing with her is just quite a portly set woman and I want to place her about that tall. Um, I've, as I'm seeing her features now, she's got um, rosy cheeks, really rosy cheeks. So I would say she would not adopt her, but I would say she's a prime candidate for this sort of um, condition. Um, with her as well, I'm seeing um, two dogs. She wasn't shy when it came to having a drink because I'm seeing her with a pint of um, bitter and I feel that that was a favourite tipple. Um, as I'm stood here, I'm wanting to... and I want to sit here. I want to sit here with this lady. I'm drawn to this area here. It's given me the name um, Thomas Peterson. Um, I'm here in 68 when he passed. Um, I can't repeat fully what he's saying because he is using a bit of coarse language. I feel he is very frustrated and he's not fully compass mentis. Um, he doesn't like us being here, um, particularly because there's two mediums here, myself and Glenn over there. Um, he doesn't appreciate the light vibration that we're bringing into this room. All I've got with how he passed is a farming incident and I feel as though he was crushed. And I want to say um, from the chest onwards, like some machinery fell on him, because I feel quite winded as I'm speaking now. So after a fascinating day in Nottingham, we've decided to retire with a beer and a bowl of chips. In fact, mm -hmm. I think they're Curly Fries, actually. They are indeed Curly and, Fries, yeah. And uh, it's been fascinating listening to Glenn over there talking about all the things he's picked up on. Now, Glenn is a regular of this pub. I'm sure he won't mind me saying that. No. Do you want to come and join us, Glenn? And Glenn... Just tell us, have you picked up on some of the things that Glenn was talking about, or do you know of any stories about this place? Having come here regular, I do have, I do have sort of, I know I also live in the village, um, so I am aware of uh, local stories and local histories and legends connected with the pub and the ship room. There's a legend that D.H. Lawrence actually penned Lady Chatterley's lover in the ship room. In this room. In the oh, right, room, okay. yeah. Excellent. And also, Tevisal Manor, which is just down the road, was actually mm. the inspiration for the actual um, the book. Oh, wow. So. What about those sightings? Is there anything that Glenn picked one thing up on I that think... you can lead more on, give more information Yeah, on? one thing I can definitely confirm that Glenn picked up on is the lady and dog. There is a lady that's been seen in the corner, and um, the corner there. there is actually a dog as well, that's been seen, not really doing much, just sat there. I have seen a gentleman, actually strange enough, Matt, don't freak out, sat where you are now. Right? <laughs> In this corner. <laughs> I mean, so he, yes. So is he sat there now? Am I like, no, he's not sat, sat there, there. Oh, that's a relief then. The thing that I feel when I walk in this room, you know, a, a bit like I said when we went into the women's section in the galleries of justice this morning yeah that had it's got a similar atmosphere not quite as aggressive as that room but it's got no. a similar feel to it it feels heavy it, yeah makes your head feel like someone's feel doing this to it. yeah yeah, yeah. and that's yeah. something that i pick up on as yeah. well you know as yeah. someone that's not a tune as it were mm. is that a common mm. thing um yeah you can pick that up in uh, various locations buildings um the easiest thing to do is uh, assess what's going on obviously is it something that's within yourself is it the environment you know you ask these questions narrow it down and then when you do realize it is um, the atmosphere of the room if it's causing you physical distress then obviously you will step away from that energy and you'll find that you'll get back right back to your normal self again you spend a lot of time in this pub in general yeah have you got any stories you can tell us about this place, ghost stories that all the people have said, you know, chitter chatter or 
any history Strange. you can tell us about? Strangely enough, initially when it, it wasn't even the Carnarvon to start off with, mm -hmm. it was called the Cross Keys for years. And he was situated obviously between Plesley, Tavistall, Tiff Shelf, and the Southern Ashford area. Mm -hmm. And it was an ideal place for people to meet. Right. Um, but then it was named after uh, the Lords of Carnarvon. Okay. Who actually uh, inherited the lands around Tavistall in this area. Yeah. I know down in the cellar, there's, there's quite a regular thing occurs is the gas gets turned off. Right. And people being down and they feel that there is a male presence down in the cellar. Okay. Rumour has it there was a gentleman who actually uh, died in the cellar, a former landlord. Mm -hmm. That That is unsubstantiated, however, it, um, things do seem to happen, which is quite interesting. Yeah, I think it's a fascinating place, really. What I can tell you is a few recent events that's happened just outside. Um, basically, a bottle of spirits has been th more or less thrown on the floor spun around in front of about two or three witnesses wow. and nobody's actually seen well obviously seen it come off and no what liquid has been spilled either really yeah wow a few weeks ago there was a cleaner cleaner at the back of the pub a uh, lady was behind the bar just sorting out and they both heard a female voice shouting yoohoo and they thought it was <laughs> <laughs> Where we started outside the galleries of justice we've been asked to come back to do a little bit of investigating check out some of the gadgets and check out what is probably the most haunted location in Nottingham. So we're here in the uh, reception of the Galleries of Justice in Nottingham. We've come back to do a, a night investigation. We got invited to come back, which is amazing. And I thought before we actually start doing any investigating, it might be nice to talk through some of the gadgets and toys that we actually use on these investigations. Yeah. In my hand here, I've got a, a digital dictaphone, a really sensitive one. Um, what? Would something like this be used for on a, on a paranormal investigation? Yeah. Again, you just basically said the dictaphone is like picking up EVPs, which we said earlier in the day is the yeah, electronic voice phenomena. Right, so that's not something that we physically hear no. here now? <clears throat> no. We would love to hear it. But it but, so. so why do you think it's picked up on a digital device and not an actual by ears? Is it in different ways as well? Uh, sometimes spirit find it a lot easier and the users less of their energy to interact with electronic devices. So the idea is that you go back and you play this back after the investigation and listen to yes. it? Yeah. Right. But we have got some uh, that we can... This is called a, a, a PSB7 spirit box. It looks quite interesting. This just scans basically the um, frequencies, the FM, AM, radio noises. It? It's turning it on and it just sweeps through the three different frequencies and the theory is spirit can actually manipulate this right. okay. to actually speak through it. So I've got my own little dictaphone here, which I carry around with me like this. And have you had results from this? Oh yes, certainly. Yeah. 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 It's very corridor, Yes. If you remember right? Yeah. And, What's um, a K2 meter? Basically, it's picking up milligauss, it's like uh, electromagnetic frequencies. So, EMF. Right. It's, a, it's a fancy EMF gadget, really. So, the higher the light, the more towards the red, so it goes from green and it's flashing just then. Yeah, is that Yeah, right? sometimes it's the electric. Because this is near it? Yeah, maybe. Could be, yes. So, sometimes they move it close to the battery compartment at the back, it starts to flicker a little bit, which is obviously because yes. that is. It's picking up the electric device. Yes. 
Brilliant. So something else I wanted to quickly mention, and we can have a closer look at this, was we were chatting upstairs a second ago about a mobile phone app. It picks up on um, different frequencies within the atmosphere, and it uh, locates a word with a particular frequency. So this has got a catalogue of words thousands upon thousands of different words and um, it enables you to talk to spirit ask out using your own voice obviously <laughs> you don't believe this one well, he's just gone up in the toilet what's <laughs> well, just gone up in the toilet yeah. what's happened seriously go on seriously because the toilet flush next door to me did it yeah the toilet roll no, yeah. it was like an open roll. and is that yeah. a I thought to myself well that other lady that's with us is upstairs isn't she yeah well, then again, they say water is a conductor of spiritual activity, so water can conduct a ship out of it. <laughs> Not the <this> China. <laughs>
And I feel as though we're being toyed with here with these, these messages. There's something not quite right about them. I feel as though um, this individual in particular is, is what did he say? Warp. Warp. Yeah, is reveling in the fact that it's got all our energies and all our divided attentions collectively. And now I'm aware that it's, it's trying to change my voice. So I'm just going to tell him to back off. Thank you. Thank you. That was interesting. Did you see that then? I saw a white haze come this way. Did you? Like a mist. Yeah. Right. And I also felt a breeze at the same time. Just here, it's a woman. Again, the name Edith. Yeah, it feels warm. Warmer, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. All the way down. Warmer? She's that high. It stops there. And it feels solid there, Edith. Is she Goodman's. Uh, Goodman's. Edith Goodman's. 57, she passed. Um, same cons consumption. I don't know what that means. She had too much. Consumption. <laughs> She's come here to diffuse the situation from this negative spirit who I mentioned earlier that's tried to sap our energy. Um, Put a condition on me. You know, she has a bit of a heart attack. Yeah, I was just about to say <laughs> oh, She's put it on me, on my chest. Yeah, that, I've had a pain in my chest like, yeah. the past two or three minutes, like, yeah. Yeah. I've been studying before you, you guys said that. That, that, that is her, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> that's she was stood behind you. Yeah, when you were. Yeah. Just the chest. Right there. Yeah, 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 just yeah. like a. Bit of silent, mate. Yeah. Yeah. You were picking it up. Yeah. Okay, take that That's interesting. Three, three people, so, well, four people just do the same thing. Oh, thank you. Right, can we have some communication from anyone? Jesus, it's not roughing my bloody hair or what? I feel like someone's doing this. <laughs> Stand there. Yeah. See if it feels any different. Seriously, it felt like someone would just rough it back in my hair. Give me goosebumps. Now it's not in Again. Yeah. I don't know how the judges know you. Look at this sign as well. The blood pole. Why is this one a Why would it come down here then, just to follow you guys? It seems to connect with me for some reason, doesn't it? And we've heard him that many times. <laughs> <laughs> Strangely. I've felt it downstairs and all in the caves. Right. <laughs> oh. Outside, down this, yeah, down the steps. Yeah. And there's a there's a cell right at the bottom. Okay. Um, in the little corridor, it's pitch dark. And that's where we eventually heard him as well. <coughs> with the groan, the deep groan, mm -hmm. like a growl. William, are you with us here in this cell? If you are, can you make a noise, please, for us? Hi, William. We mean you no know, harm. Just like to communicate with you. And if it's all we can help you in any way, we surely will do our very best. If 
She can make a sound, uh, taps, bangs. Uh, we've witnessed you growling around the building. If you can come forward and do that, or copy it, copy this sound. Do you really want to go dark for a minute? Yeah, yeah. Over there. Now you can see why they're called the dark cells, yeah? Yeah. Well, you just imagine being in here, Matt. Yeah, not pleasant. Did you hear breathing then? I heard sort of breath at the side of me went, I don't know. Can we hear your voice, please? Wow, what a day we've had so far.